Life moves at a fast pace. Everybody has challenges. But God is on the move. From Pittsburgh to Nashville, join me on the journey on today's life, sharing stories of unshakable faith. In 2015, over 564,000 people were homeless on a given night in the United States. Causes usually result from an unforeseen crisis, a physical disability, mental anguish, post-traumatic stress, a financial emergency, or a traumatic event in life that prevents them from being able to hold on to their home. Candy Christmas was born into a record deal. She recorded her first album at the age of 13 with her family's group, The Hemp Hills. As part of this legendary Southern Gospel group, Candy became one of the genre's most respected singers, collecting six GMA Dove Awards in addition to her own Dove as the member of the group Heirloom. Years later, while battling depression and being told that medications or hospitalization were her best options, Candy was taken by a friend to an inner city bridge in Nashville, Tennessee, where homeless people abound. This is her story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Life. Candy, it is such an honor to meet you and to be here and just to see what you're doing. Well, thank you. I'm honored to have you here. Now, everybody knows that you're an accomplished GMA Dove Award uh, gospel singer, and I've known you for years. And But how did you go from the tour bus to the bridge? Well, God has been so good to me. I, I've had so many wonderful, I feel like, chapters in my life, singing with my family. I started, uh, I recorded my first record when I was 12, and um, that will let you know how long ago it was by, it was a record, oh. <laughs> a track. <laughs> um, and that was just an amazing time in my life to travel on a tour bus with my parents and my brothers, my siblings. and. Um, and you're, you're, tell me a little bit about your parents and your relatives because a lot of people don't know who you, that well, you come from a family of gospel singers. Right. Well, my mother was a happy Goodman, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was a happy Goodman, uh, sibling to uh, Howard and Vestal and Rusty and Sam Goodman. And Tanya Goodman Tanya, is yeah. uh, my cousin. Good friend of ours. And, yes, a very good friend. And um, so uh, I just grew up you know, in gospel music and, and loving music and uh, very mobile my entire life, which, which for a kid growing up and seeing all the national landmarks and, and mm -hmm. being able to visit around the world, and it, it was amazing. It was a wonderful, wonderful way to grow up. Um, but as I grew older and uh, married and had children, I met Bill and Gloria Gaither, mm -hmm. and I traveled with them for about six years and did about 50 of their homecoming videos. Amazing. Amazing. And, uh, and that was just, uh, it was really, really a wonderful chapter in my life mm -hmm. and uh, added such a, a new dimension to me as a vocalist. Um, I learned under the tutelage of, of Bill Gaither and Gloria, and uh, it was just, it was an amazing time. Um, and then um, as as time went on, um, I, uh, I suffered from depression. Uh, I think that probably it's hereditary. My dad suffered from depression, his dad before him. And so I, um, I suffered from depression and had to take a leave of absence from the Gaithers. Um, and I was still um, loving Jesus. I'm married to a pastor. Um, and I have uh, three beautiful children and uh, four wonderful grandchildren, um, and, and continued my walk with Christ. You know, it's really, it's, it's, it's really funny. Uh, there's an old saying that says, you know, bad things happen to good people. Mm 
and sometimes bad things do happen even when you're in relationship with Christ they do. you you're praying and reading your Bible and mm -hmm. you're faithful to church and sometimes things happen and um, at, at the time that uh, of my depression that it started uh, in about uh, year 2000 um, I thought it would be the end of my life, that mm. doors were closed and that my public ministry would be over and that that was the end mm. of Candy. And, and it was, it, it, in a sense, it really truly was. Um, Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called unto his purpose. I love that and, scripture. Yes, and, and I remember praying and asking the Lord, how could you turn this horrible mess into something good for my life? And there was a little boy that was trying to quote scripture, and he said, oh, the Lord works in mischievous ways, his wonders to <laughs> And sometimes I think he does. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came to the end of candy uh, in, during that time of depression. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the Lord opened a door to minister uh, to the homeless here in Nashville. Uh, Nashville has 11,000 homeless people. Wow. 4,000 of those are children. Uh, Davidson County, which is Nashville, mm -hmm. has uh, over 3,000 homeless children enrolled in uh, our school system, public school system here. And so as God was closing one door, he opened another. Uh, I suffered for depre from depression without medication. I decided to go a different direction. And uh, I met a gentleman that said, you know, I think you need to meet some people under the bridge that have real problems because my problems were, you know, my bills were paid, I was, I was eating, um, you know, I had a home and a husband and my problems were, were not, you know, the same kinds of problems, I guess, and struggles that a homeless person would have. So <clears throat> he said, can you cook? And I said, I, I guess I was so thin from depression I didn't look like I could cook. And I said, yes, sir, I can. And he said, well, cook and let's go to the bridge. And I found beautiful, gracious, homeless people down there that needed wow. Jesus. And they didn't care if I was a gospel singer. They didn't care my name. All they wanted to know is, will your gospel work for me? Will it work in my life? And so um, I think that at the end of the day, I gave my way out of depression. I got excited uh, about serving the homeless. And, and I'm not depressed anymore. Wow. And I thank God for that. I just feel like that I live a blessed life. Candy, tell me how God changed your life and healed you from your depression. Well, um, I, you know, I, I'm not really sure why I wouldn't take medication. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it, mm -hmm. I, I really wouldn't, because I really suffered um, for, night after night, week after week, and sometimes month after month. I would stay awake at night and uh, think of death and my death mm -hmm. and how I could die, how I should die, how I would die. <laughs> Just horrible, you know, thinking that my family would be better off without me. And um, at times I felt like that I was just like a shell, going through the motions, taking my kids to school and picking them up, going back to bed, staying in a dark room. I smile when I need to smile, go to church when I need to go to church, but I was like rotting inside. I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to church. I'm still loving Jesus. I'm still reading the word. And the denomination that I was raised in, everything was the devil, you know, mm -hmm. it's the devil. So mm -hmm. I'd get in my prayer closet. Devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on earth is loose in heaven. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And one day I can remember exactly where I was in my prayer closet. And I'm just working up a sweat, binding the devil. 
And I just stopped and I said, you know, Lord, <laughs> this is not working, is it? And he, and he said, no, it isn't. And I said, what am I fighting? What is this? Hmm. And I just felt the Lord speak to my heart. And he said, your will is fighting my will. I'm wanting to be in front of thousands of people. I'm wanting to be on television and singing on the Gaither videos and, you know, being candy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I got something else I need you to do. There are people on the streets of Nashville that need Jesus. I didn't know that. I've driven up and down for years, driven up and down Jefferson Street looking for homeless people to minister to. I didn't know where they were. And I would tell the Lord, where are they? Because they're not in the mall shopping with me. They're not sitting on my pew at church. Where are they? So God brought me to the place that I could go under the bridge. The old candy wouldn't have gotten her hands dirty. This candy was broken. The old candy died and a new candy resurrected in me. For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ in me. And so it was like God broke off all the old candy so that Christ could come forth in me and I could be the hands and feet of Jesus is what I really wanted to do. So I got down there and I, I was able to feed people and, and I was so excited the first time I, I'm feeding these people and the next morning I jump up and I'm going to Dollar General and Walmart and buying toothbrushes and toothpaste and peanut butter and anything that doesn't have to be refrigerated and I'm excited and I'm on fire. I'm so excited. Well, like two or three months later, I told my husband, I said, wait a minute, I'm not depressed. And he said, I know. I forgot that I had been depressed. I was so busy and so excited about giving to others that I forgot that I was depressed. And that is the God's honest truth. Well, you mentioned in your bio that you thought when you went to the bridge that you, know, you were giving so much to them. But in turn, they changed your life. Yes, they did. I read a doctor's report that said that when you do acts of kindness to others, that there's an endorphin that's released inside your body and it's called oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And it's what the Christmas spirit feels like or, or a puppy love crush. It's oxytocin and it's a feel good drug that your body makes when you do acts of kindness to others. Well, I didn't know that. But this doctor's report likened it to a cocaine high. Now, I've never done cocaine or any kind of drugs, but I have been high on giving, and I've been high on loving, and that's what healed me. And I think that doctors are probably just now finding out what you and I have already learned, that it is more blessed to give mm -hmm. than to receive. There is a blessing in giving and, and loving other people. And so I'm not depressed. I've not, I've not been depressed since then. Now, um, you know, like I said, I, I wouldn't recommend that to, to really anyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, because, let me back up and say, my dad suffered depression and he took medication and it helped him. You have to do what you have to do right. to get through what you're going mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not against medication, mm -hmm. but I felt in my heart that, that there was something more for me. I was raised in a, in a pastor's home. My dad was a pastor when I was born. And I learned Isaiah 9, 6, which says this, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and he shall be called the mighty God, mm -hmm. the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And I found Jesus Christ not only as my Savior, my Lord, my Redeemer, but I found a whole new dimension of Christ that I never knew existed, and that's the peace that passes understanding. And I'm thankful for the knowledge that I didn't have to find it in a pill, I didn't have to find it in a psychiatrist, which thank God for all of those things, but I saw Christ in a new way. Then, 
when the Lord showed me that my will was fighting his will, I stopped in my prayer closet that day. And I said, Lord, forgive me for fighting against your will. Mm -hmm. I repent. Now, if I live in a tent in China, and for the rest of my life, I'm only going to hand out tracts, Christ will be enough mm -hmm. for me. And I can tell you that when the rubber meets the road, when it looks like all hell has broken out in your life, Christ is enough. If I'm never on Christian television, if I never do another record, if I don't ever do anything else, I can he bask is. in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is enough. And how long has it been since this happened? Twelve years. Twelve years. <laughs> that is amazing. It's incredible. It's Jesus. He's amazing. Candy, tell me about the bridge. What is a normal day for you to get ready? First of all, I love the first part of that question, tell me about the bridge. We don't have enough time to talk about all I the wanna, wonderful I things. I want to hear about it. <laughs> um, well, okay, so I'm just going to tell you what we do. Mm -hmm. um, on a Tuesday night, for example, uh, our, we have mobile kitchens and a couple of box trucks. And um, we have spent the day on Tuesday loading box trucks. And my son, my oldest son, is a, a chef. He went to school to be a chef. And he is the master chef for the homeless. And he is employed by the Bridge Ministry. And so he picks and chooses all the nice things that, that come in, the produce and whatnot. And so he's preparing food all day long. And the guys are in the warehouse um, loading the trucks. We will uh, get the mobile kitchens and the box trucks down under the bridge. And we'll set up several hundred chairs um, right there under a seven lane bridge. We have volunteers setting up chairs. We have volunteers setting up um, uh, the sound system. I have a praise team. And so the praise team will sing as the homeless people come through the line and sit and, and they begin to worship and eat. And um, so on a Tuesday night, like in midsummer, we will serve somewhere around 600 to 1,000 oh, wow. homeless people. Uh, and, and then once they've all gone through the line, then we know that's time, the time to introduce the speaker. And so I have preachers and speakers from all over the city, pastors of churches, or that even come in from out of state to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so when you, with all of the warehouse and everything out of the way, the bottom line, what we do, is we feed the poor mm -hmm. and we share Jesus. And do you remember John the Baptist when he was in prison? He sent his disciples to Jesus. And he said, are you the one or do we look for another? And Jesus didn't even answer him. He said this. He said, when the blind leave, they leave seeing. When the lame leave, he leaves walking. The dead are raised. You tell John this that the blind man got what he needed with sight. He got, the lame man got what he needed, which was to walk. The dead was raised, and the poor had the gospel preached to them. He didn't say the poor got money. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, poor people need money. Mm -hmm. No, they need Jesus. If I give them money, tomorrow money's gone. Right. If I give them Jesus, Jesus will be with them forever even when I'm gone back to the warehouse. So Jesus, sharing Jesus is the most important thing. All the food, the clothes, the toiletry items, it's bait. Jesus said, come and I will make you fishers of men. I'm sorry, I'm preaching. <laughs> no, it's great, it's great. I get excited about it, I really do. So that's what we do on a Tuesday. Okay. But uh, I mentioned to you that there are about 3,000 homeless children enrolled in Davidson County school system, public schools. And we have volunteers right now, we are serving 22 public schools that have homeless and poor children. And we uh, have volunteers that come in and 
uh, bag groceries for 800 of those children and we're taking on more schools and more children every year but uh, what we do is uh, these bags are nutrition specific we can't just send out, mm -hmm. out chips and cookies okay mm -hmm. so uh, we bag these groceries for each child enough to sustain them for three meals on Saturday and three meals on Sunday until they get back to school on Monday for 800 Amazing. children. So that's a huge undertaking. Also another um, aspect of what we do is our warehouse has become a more or less a food bank for other ministries that don't have like storage for food, like mm -hmm. other ministries that are feeding the poor and feeding the homeless, churches and whatnot, will come to us for, for the food. So we have a lot of things, a lot of moving parts. You do have a large <laughs> warehouse, it's amazing. Well, and one of the, the really glorious things that I've seen uh, that, I, that I didn't foresee was that we have youth groups come from all over the country. We've even had a youth group from Korea come um, to volunteer in the warehouse and then go with us down under the bridge. So it's really neat to be able to impact young people um, and their lives. And I always tell them when we do orientation, I want you tonight when you go to the bridge, I want you to see where sin leads. Mm -hmm. Because every alcoholic started with one drink. You know, I want to talk about the homeless. Yeah. You've reached thousands and thousands. Is there one homeless person that you can think of that just makes you smile? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of them. But I, I would like to tell you about uh, Jeff Stoltz. Jeff Stoltz, um, when he came to us, he was a meth addict. Mm -hmm. And he weighed 108 pounds, and he had uh, staph infection. He was covered with sores. And when Jeff came to us, he wanted nothing to do with the gospel. So he would come and get his plate, and he would wander off out of earshot so he didn't have to hear about Jesus. He wanted nothing to do with it. But one night, Jeff stayed close in proximity to the bridge that he heard the gospel. And he came and he gave his heart to Jesus. And Jesus radically changed his life. Radically. Um, a couple of years later, I had a pastor come uh, from Brentwood to preach, and he got out of his car, and a fat guy got out on the other side of the car, and the pastor said, do you know this guy? And I said, well, he looks familiar. I see thousands of people, right, under <laughs> the bridge. Okay. I said, well, he looks familiar. He said, this is Jeff Stoltz. The last time I'd seen oh, him, he no. was 108 pounds. Wow. At that point, two years later, he owned his own home outright, he was preaching the gospel and setting up tents on weekends and evangelizing. But today, Jeff Stoltz pastors a church in North Carolina, Amazing. and he is over the entire state of North Carolina for Celebrate Recovery. And God is using his testimony to pull other people out of addiction all over the state of North Carolina. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the GMA award, the honor <laughs> award. Who presented it to you? Well, Jeff did. We were supposed to get a superstar to come and present this award, but I feel like that Jeff Stoltz is, is a, oh, a superstar. He, so he got up there and shared a little bit about his testimony. And when we told him, this is funny, but when we told him where it was, we said, do you know how to get there? He said, oh yeah. That's how he talked. He said, oh yeah, I stole some cars there one time. Brought the house down. He got a standing ovation and everybody loved just Jeff Stoltz. Great. <laughs> Candy, where can people volunteer and where, the, where can they find you? Bridgeministry.org. That is our okay. website and I would love for anybody oh, to come and volunteer. I'm going to. Good. And thank you so much. I thank just, you. you have an amazing ministry. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, God gives all of us unique gifts and talents, and he might be calling you to reach out, to create a bridge that will help others. Do it today. Don't delay. It might just change your life, too, so that you can share your story of unshakable faith with others and give God the glory. This is Today's Life. I'll see you next time.
Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.